Good morning. If you were watching last week, you'll remember this happened. The flaws that are in the casting are tiny, tiny little pin bubbles. They're not everywhere on the casting, but they're, they're pretty uniform across the thing, and they are not in the original casting of the dog, so they defeated that. So in a subsequent casting, it's gonna be my job to defeat them. It's usable, it's just not perfect. And we go for perfect every time. We don't get it, but we go for it, and we can learn from this. And now I'm gonna give some thought to how to uh, defeat this little pin bubble problem. And I did think about it. And the thing is, when you do rotational molding, the, the resin just sloshes around on the inside of the mold. And uh, it doesn't, there's nothing really to force it down into the really fine, fine details in the mold. And so it, it kind of just kind of floats over the surface. And that is what gives us all of these horrible little bubbles. So we need to find a way to defeat that. And uh, I thought about it and I said, what we're gonna do is uh, use a little mechanical pressure, a little bit of help. <laughs> we're gonna push the resin down into the, into the surface and see if that works. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But anyway, what do I always preach? When, whenever you make a comment, you ask me a question or are here on the channel, what do I always say? You gotta test, test, test. So before we commit to two pounds of resin and make another, you know, semi-okay casting. Let's make a little test and see if my, um, well, I can't call it my innovation because I didn't invent it. <laughs> let's see if my method will work. So let's mix this batch up. It's a little batch. And let's brush some resin into place. And all I'm gonna do here is brush it in. We're gonna brush it in like this all around quickly. And then we're gonna rotate it. Let's go ahead and even do this. Let's just pour the rest of this in the face. Let's do that. Let's just pour that and slosh it and see if I can just push it and make a nice test out of all of this. Okay, that's our test. Let's see what happens. Now, I don't wanna ruin this brush particularly. I don't wanna ruin this brush, so I'm gonna squeeze out the resin and I'm gonna dunk it in acetone and clean it. Acetone is a solvent for most urethane resins. Anyway, check, check the brand you're using and check what the manufacturer tells you is the cleanup solvent for it. But in the case of this particular manufacturer's resin, it is indeed, I get, all right, so that's clean or clean enough. Listen, this brush is dirt cheap and that's the way I like it. I like a dirt cheap brush, you know me, I love dirt cheap anything. So this is all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do this. And if in a, in a thin film like this, I think that's gonna be flexible enough and, and I'm gonna be able to close the mold together. I'm gonna brush it in all over. You guys will see what I'm gonna do. But you get the idea. We're gonna brush the stuff in. We're gonna force the resin down into the fur. And then we're gonna rotate around it and that will be a lot of fun. Here we go. I think that we're ready to peel this test and see how we did. And the head is thicker, so let's start with that. Let's peel it on out. Yeah, okay, well, maybe I'll get the whole thing in one pull. Who the heck knows? It, might, it looks like it's just gonna kinda come in one pull. And that would be handy dandy. All right, it is coming in one pull. Come on, baby, baby. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's... That's, that's just going to work. Perfect the mundle. That's, there's not a bubble in sight. So that's going to be our technique. Beautiful. Now, I do have a little bit of goop de gop in the, you can see, in the molds. And one way that usually works to pull that out is with tape. Let's see if it works. Normally, you can pull out, you can pull, up, you can pull resin out. See how it sticks to the tape? You see that? So you just clean out the mold by sticking the, resin to the tape. And that's really gentle, by the way, also on the mold itself. It doesn't hurt the mold. Waste tape. <laughs> Burn up some tape. <laughs> but oh well. You know, everything's a trade-off. I don't want red flecks. Here's the thing. If I leave all these red, see, if I leave all these little red flecks, you see that? You can see that. If I leave them in the, uh, in the mold, it's okay. They're just going to bond and make little red flecks into the um, casting, the next casting. I could leave them and, you know, this object is probably gonna get painted anyway. But uh, 
I'll just go around and clean them out. It won't take long and I'll be done and it'll be beautiful. All right, so we are ready. We've got the test made. We know it's gonna work and uh, let's get busy making the actual casting. I just mixed up the A side and the B side, 80 gram batch. And what I'm gonna do is mix it thoroughly, but I'm gonna mix it fast. I'm gonna mix it really fast. I'm gonna get it out of the cup. I wanna get this resin out of the cup and into the mold like this. And the reason for that is I don't want it in a mass, sitting in a mass. I want it in a, in a sheet. I don't want it in a mass. It cures up quicker in a mass than it will cure up in the sheet. And so we want to get this thing this mold done. Now I'm going to get a little bit of mass, a little bit of resin into the parting lines undoubtedly, because I'm going fast here. And if I get that resin in the parting lines, that means I might not have quite as clean a parting line there, but that's okay. I want to get this mold coated and with very well coated, like I'm doing, so that there's all of the details in the fur is coated out, wetted out, so we aren't going to catch bubbles in there. Ooh, I'm spilling. Now it's okay, I'll use the spill. No worries, that's why I put paper on my table. Everywhere I look, I wanna find, I wanna make sure that I've got resin coating the fur. And this should help to ensure that we're gonna get a really good high surface detail. All right, I haven't missed very many spots. I think I'm pretty much there. Okay, let's get this mold closed up. ASAP into the thing it goes and we'll close up the mold like this like this all right let's close up the mold all right put it on its base oh beautiful that worked out well all right now let's get rid of the mess that's underneath us just going to slide it out of the way because what we want to do now is get this mold closed up quickly while the resin is still in a soft state and therefore uh, will kind of conform. And it'll help. I'm, I can tell that I'm jamming resin. Ugh, I don't want to get resin on my hands. Okay, I can tell that I'm jamming resin into the parting line. That's okay. Like I said, we're just going to sacrifice a little bit of parting line cleanliness for uh, a, a, a well-skinned mold. Let's get this thing on nice and tight, nice and tight. Put that one on there like that. Parting line is looking pretty together. Okay, now we need to get the base on, bring it to the edge of the table. So I just put that band on there. Put this one on over here. I'm kind of looking at the resin that's on the table because that's telling me the state of the resin on the inside of the mold. So that's good information to have. Keep putting these bands on here. Third band. Perfect. Let's get the big yellow band on and this thing is ready to mount in the cradle. But at this point, I don't really have to hurry. Nothing's going to change. The mold is together. It's well coated. It didn't leak. Ooh, yeah, look at that. It's all coated inside. I, I know, I know you can't see in there, but I can see in there and it's looking really good. So, all right, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna get this thing mounted on the cradle and we're gonna spin the shots and see what we get. What I did was I already poured the first shot. I poured pour number one because I wanted to get it in there really quickly, which I succeeded at. So this is the second shot. And uh, so far it poured really well. Now I can tell you, leaks are just a fact of life when you roto mold. You've got to be prepared for leaks. That's why I've got paper under the machine. I like to keep guards on my machine, these cardboard guards, because they catch the leaks and keep the machine clean. Otherwise, after a while, I've seen rotational molding machines that are heavier with <laughs> clogged, clogged resin than they are with uh, the, the weight of the machine itself. It's really funny. Many people have 
written to me and asked me why I don't motorize the machine. And I will say the same thing because it's not the motors that are the issue. It's the control of the motors that are the issue. Nowadays, you could program a machine to control your motors and it would be relatively easy to program a machine for true random motion. Just, you know, write a program and get some little controller, Arduino or something, computer, to control the machine. So all you need is, you need is two stepper motors. You don't need like heavy industrial motors or any nonsense like that. It just simply isn't necessary. So witness cup time. Let's take a look here. Let's see. I'm going to see if you can see that. There's a light right there. Can you see that the sag in there? I don't know if you can. It's not really sagging. It's, it's barely sagging. It's pretty uh, caramel. So I think we're getting close. Get this cap out of here. So I think we're ready to pull it and we are, yes. All right, now, hmm, that's the, here's an interesting thing. Uh, can you, how am I gonna get you to see this? I, I hope you can see that, but anyway, the, uh, the, the, the spout is completely closed by resin, which is what, how you want it on the last shot. You don't want it on this shot. So I'm going to cut it open, show you this. I've got a solid, what, maybe, eighth inch of wall thickness now. So one more shot and I think we'll be just fine. Okay, let me mix up the final shot. I think I'm gonna, I think you guys have seen enough rotation on this thing. I think I'm gonna come back to you after the final shot is done and we shall unveil our masterpiece. <laughs> and hopefully it'll be fantastic. You never know. I took our boy off the, off the machine and we're ready for the big reveal. As you can see, I did get some more leakage. See the leakage? Got some leakage in there. Now it's Monday and you are watching this video if, if you're watching it the day it comes out on Friday. So this video is going to be published this coming Friday. So I really have absolutely no idea <laughs> if this thing's going to come out. And if it doesn't, Oh boy, it's gonna be a long week for me. So it's like waiting to find out if this thing really did come out or not. You know, I gotta tell you for sure, cause one of these days I am gonna catastrophically fail. <laughs> it, it's just gonna happen cause it happens. Again, you know, mold making is one of those weird things where you're doing things procedurally, but you don't know if you're gonna win because, oh, there's so many variables and so many horrible things that can go terribly wrong. It's just the nature of it. Uh, it's much more fun to do it in front of a YouTube audience, make an ass of myself that way, rather than be sitting in the boardroom of some major studio and having to explain why their prototype isn't ready because I, I screwed up. <laughs> Been there. Oh yeah. Came off the base this time very successfully. So that's a good start. Came off the base, no problems. And uh, here's where my here's where my beeswax comes in handy. You notice this is cardboard. This base pulls right off, clean as can be. Why? Because it's heavily waxed. Uh, beeswax is your friend. I, I I can't rave about beeswax enough for this business. Beeswax. I love you, and that's why it popped off the wood. It's well waxed. No more talking. Time to get popping. One shell off. The other shell off. I'm nervous now. What if we have another bomb? What if we failed? Let's take a look. See. Here, I gotta get it. I got. You gotta see this while I see it. That way, if I cry, you'll know why. Oh man, that is, yeah, that is night and day better. Oh yeah, <laughs> that is better. Now, got some, got some more flash. I'll show you that in a minute when we pull off the face. Let's not get to bragging yet. Let's not get to bragging. We got to get the plug out. That's the next thing. Got to wrestle this plug out of there. It should pop because it doesn't catch air, which is the genius of the hole down the middle. Okay, that popped right on out of there. 
And now we can release the face, release the important part of the dog. See how we did. Okay, nice. There's our kid right there, looking cute. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, that mold is nice and warm. I wish it was cold in the shop. It'd be very nice. But it's not. It's hot. All right, now look at the difference between the first one and the second one. <sighs> Lots of flash on this second one. Nonetheless, the parting line, once we clean this flash off, you can see how it's paper. It's, it's literally like tissue paper. It's so thin. That's going to clean right off of there. Not a worry in the world. And um, super nice. Just super nice casting. You see that thing? Look at that thing. Just marvel. Just marvel at the glory. I love when Cassie's come out of It's so damn fun. All right. I'm going to call this project a success. I'm going to call it done. Yeah, I think it's good. Came out well. And uh, nice. This wraps up Dave's Pug Mug project. <laughs> so six episodes uh, of doing this project, but it's really been a lot of fun. This was a great project because there were so many pieces and parts to this mold, and uh, there were some complexities for getting it to cast right. So a great opportunity for me to learn. I hope you got something out of it too. Uh, if you did, hit that like button and hit the subscribe button too. I really appreciate it. Uh, the, my channel is growing fast, and I really do uh, want to thank you all for being here. This was the first of the viewer projects, uh, the, the many more to come. And I'd love to see what you're doing, working on and uh, maybe we can uh, get together and work on something here on the channel. So send me in your projects and I'll see you next week.